The crisis of the Greater North of Uganda can be traced back to 1986, when the then military government that was led by Tito Kelo lost power to the National Resistance Army of Yoweri Museveni. The impact of this crisis resulted into several years of endless loss of lives, massive abduction, sexual violence, poverty and underdevelopment, people living in constant fear and terror. The violent death rates are estimated at three times higher than those reported in Iraq. The 20 years of war has cost Uganda over 1.7 billion dollars. The crude mortality rates are said to be three times higher than those recorded in Darfur. And the displacement of over 2 million people, the majority of whom are women and children. The women made several observations which included consultation and feedback, effective planning of the peace process and promoting the spirit of reconciliation. The camp conditions in which they live have been described by Jan Iglan the UN Under Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, following his visit to the region in April 2006, as the worst form of terrorism in the world. Recognizing the role women play in peace building, the United Nations in 2000 passed the 1325 Resolution on Women, Peace and Security and called upon state parties to involve women at all levels of peace processes. Uganda has endorsed this resolution. It is in that spirit that the Uganda Women Network, UNET, with support from United Nations Development Fund for Women, UNIFEM, carried out consultative meetings with a cross-section of women stakeholders in the affected areas. The women made several observations. We wanted that the end the government saw the okay, the government itself to say yes. We recognize that we went from somewhere. Then also, an LRO, oh, there was the, the LRO leader also to say, yes, we also went wrong and we did something. Therefore, can we make now together a journey which will bring us to, you see. So for me, the mediation was a little bit, they were rushing. They didn't really kick off from the very start that recognizing where we went wrong. I think to add on that, it is its lack of spirit of reconciliation. Because for me, I feel if, if both parties have a spirit of reconciliation and forgiveness, I think we should, we should have moved uh, far ahead. We, all both parties have uh, arrogancy because they say, I can, and confidence of what, what they think each party has. But the problem is they're not caring of the vulnerable people who are affected by their confidence in one or the other. I'm still on the other on the other. They also have the the, 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 the guilt of you know 
accepting that they have been defeated. <coughs> and on the government side, there's that sense of arrogance. These are men to receive people, they are stupid, so we shall finish them. So they also have that, that <coughs> sense of guilt that they are defeated, you know. So they, they, they want to hang on this small string of playing around with the peace process or the peace talk. Somebody is guilty, giving her conditions that she, so that she doesn't come back. Somebody is proud because she doesn't want to feel that. They are filled with fight this and sick rebels in the bush. The women also pointed out that ego, arrogance, and antagonistic language in the negotiations would hinder the attainment of the sustainable peace they so much deserve. They believe that their participation is critical in pacifying the two parties. <laughs> It was evident that women want peace first. They believe that the ICC indictment is standing in the way of peace. Because of the suffering that we have had for so many years, the interest now is we need peace and peace at all costs. It is true when we handle issues of peace, we know justice is there, we know mercy is there, we know truth is there, and we know peace is there. And when I line all this, in the issue or in the situation we have now, it's like the peace has been put under the table and the other things are out. Must, must other issues like justice stand on the way of peace? I'm redirecting this question to ICC. Kilok me ICC, kikwanyo wana churi, wamirne ICC ka kikwanyo, wana churi wati mukiga, kwanyo nera churi, nera teso. Northern region when one when what team of Kija ni coin kitime kija chi pedum did not make why ni in need of ICC meal boogie. The women's appeal is directed at the two leaders. Don't get a tea, no dear Rio again. Coin equal to seven. Good team Kija, get down for bar to eat. Hear me. Post-conflict concerns were also raised by the women and they called upon the mediator and the parties to factor issues like psychosocial support in the negotiation process. We are talking of the peace because of the pain we have gone through. But when that peace comes, the next thing is revenge. We are going to have a very chaotic society, a society of violence, a society of revenge that we need to prepare for. And the only thing that would help us is that commission. And that should be attached to our cultural institution. 
In response to the women of Northern Uganda, taking into account their concerns and messages, and in solidarity with them, the Civil Society Women's Peace Coalition recommended the following to those engaged in the Juba process. Speak the language of peace to each other and to the people of Uganda, so that all are encouraged by your commitment to the process. That all involved in the peace process hold themselves accountable to the women of Uganda. Take into consideration the inclusion of perspectives from communities which have long suffered, such as women and girls, displaced internally by the conflict. Guarantee that the process and its monitoring include the protection of the rights of women and girls. Ensure that the Office of the Mediator and the parties to the negotiations have sufficient gender and women's rights expertise. Recognize and seek the participation of women in the peace process as called for in UN Security Council Resolution 1325. Therefore, in light of the ongoing Juba peace talks, it is important that the views of women survivors of the conflict are continuously tapped and integrated in the ongoing Juba negotiations.